Roger, markets pricing in a defeat for the Prime Minister. Broadly right in your view? Yes, as far as one can tell, she's going to lose the vote very heavily. Uh, I doubt myself whether the currency markets will react that much to that result because surely they must expect something like that. It's going to be the consequences, the ramifications that they'll be reacting to. Now, we may get, of course, some hint of that tonight, but we may have to wait till later. Uh, my experience is that investors all around the world are very worried about the political scene here. They're worried about the prospects of a Labour government. They're worried about instability. They're worried about the inability of this government to govern. I mean, you've lived through a lot of the events that Ed Conway was describing there. I mean, put it into context, the kind of devaluation that Sterling saw post the referendum and it continues to see now with, say, Black Wednesday. Yeah, well, I wasn't around for 1949. <laughs> um, I mean, the difference with so many of those historical examples that Ed mentioned is that we were on then a fixed exchange rate or quasi-fixed exchange rate, which we were in Black Wednesday, by the way, because we were in the mm -hmm. exchange rate mechanism. So there was a fixed lower limit. And if the pound went below that limit, which it did do, of course, on Black Wednesday, then we were out of the system and all sorts of drama then began. Now, of course, we're on a completely freely floating rate. So the man in the street may not notice, actually, what's going on. We've had it in 2007-8 when the pound fell. We had it uh, after the referendum vote, or indeed just before the referendum vote. And I think, you know, this time it may fall a bit, but I don't think it's going to cause a great drama in the way that the old occasions did. You think the big hit for Sterling comes in the, light, in the threat of a Corbyn government. That's the big downside scenario. For I think that's the big downside. Uh, without that, I suspect that the pound hasn't got much further downside. I mean, who am I to say? You know, forecasting currencies, frankly, is absolutely deadly. But all I note is that the pound has fallen a long way. And I think it's at a very competitive level. I, I think there's actually, in the medium term, more upside for the pound. Yeah, most oversold currency in the G10 yep. last yep. year. Now, in terms of your, as you say, economic forecasting is your game. You, your firm, Capital Economics, you've got three different scenarios out there at the moment. That, I mean, that, the forecaster's life is a nightmare at the moment now, isn't it? It is a nightmare, and of course there are even more possible scenarios than three, uh, but I don't want to, you know, ask for charity for economic forecasters. I'm more concerned about business people. How do they operate in this sort of position. It, it really is quite debilitating, which is one of the reasons, by the way, that I'm not so keen on the idea of the transition, which is, of course is built into Mrs May's deal. Uh, I think there's an awful lot to be said for getting it all over and done with, and I've got a great faith in the flexibility of the British economy. Once we know what we're facing and we get on with it, I'm pretty sure it'll all be fine. But your central scenario for UK GDP is that May's deal does get through at the second attempt, and we grow at around 1.5% this year. Yeah, well, something like Mrs May's deal. I think we said Mrs May's deal or something similar, some sort of amendment. And when we say... Uh working assumption. It's, you know, central scenario. It's, it is really no more than an assumption. It's a, it's a way of trying to pin down the range of possibilities. Uh, it's not necessarily the single most likely outcome. And my own view is that over the last few days, the possibility of a no deal Brexit, that's been rising. And you have penciled in a mild recession in that eventuality? Yes. We think that there will be some immediate hit. There'll be some dislocation. They're bound to be, frankly. We don't think it's going to be very serious or very long lasting. And in many ways, I think the really important question about no deal is not so much whether there's a quarter or two of weak growth or no growth. It's what happens afterwards, what happens next year and beyond. And on that, I think the omens are pretty favourable. Of course, the UK is very, very uh, exposed to global trade. Mm. Global trade appears to be slowing in the wake of the trade yeah. war. Does that not present da downside scenarios for the UK going forward? It does. And indeed, one of the things I'm worried about as a Brexit supporter is that if we do get a proper Brexit and the economy is soft because of adverse influences from world trade, nothing whatever to do with Brexit, then the other side will say, ha ha, we told you so. Yes. <laughs> now, of course, we've had the German GDP data out today, weakest growth in Germany for five years. I mean, how much of that is down to the trade war? It's very difficult to be sure, but I think a fair bit of it is due to weakness in global trade, which isn't itself all down to the trade war. The fact of the matter is that the world economy seems to be slowing. 
And uh, on, I mean, going back to Brexit, we mm. had uh, Richard Buxton, very prominent fund manager on the show last Friday lunchtime. He said he felt that Brexit uncertainty was a handbrake on the economy. He said if you just get clarity mm. on what the relationship will be, you'll see a lot of pent-up deals being done, a lot of pent-up business investment mm. coming to the fore. Do you share that view? Yes, I do. Uh, I won't quite say it doesn't matter quite what the deal is, but I think in the short term, almost any sort of deal will bring some sort of relief and it'll bring certainty. But the more important question is not about this year or next month, it's about the years after. And on that, I think the deals uh, that are on offer, prospectively, look very different indeed. I think Mrs May's deal would be a disaster. All right, Roger Bootle from Capital Economics. Got to leave it there. Good to see you.